is Ariel and I'm back with a new video and in today's video I am going to be doing a little cosplay. I don't normally do cosplay but I have watched a few episodes of that new Wednesday show and gosh darn I just love Wednesday Adams whole aesthetic. I really do. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be doing her iconic dress. No not that one. I'm talking about classic iconic dress. Yes, that one. <laughs> because I can't follow directions or do anything the way it's supposed to be done, I am going to be doing a little twist on this and I am going to be doing Wednesday Adams, but if she were vintage. Is this just an excuse to do a vintage goth look? Maybe. <laughs> My pastel heart loves goth, okay? And the pattern I'm going to be using today is the Simplicity 0827. It was originally printed in the 30s. This is a modern reproduction and it is a little water damaged. I got this uh, along with a bunch of other patterns for about a dollar or two at a thrift store and unfortunately all of them are water damaged. So I haven't actually opened this when I bought it so I don't know how the tissue paper survived the water damage. I'm fingers crossed that they aren't all stuck together and tearing and mildewy and all that stuff. So we'll see. And as far as materials goes, I'm going to be using this black velvet. This is a remnant left over from when I made my New Year's outfit the year prior. I bought an obscene amount of velvet for the project that I was doing. I don't know why I bought so much, but I'm hoping I have enough to just squeeze out this piece. I'm also going to be using a white cotton for the collar and I will be adding cuffs as opposed to how it ends in just regular stuff. Although working with velvet or stretch makes me nervous. <laughs> and I'm really excited to get this started. I absolutely love the Adams Family. I used to read the comic books. I used to watch the television shows. Uh, loved the movies in the 90s. And with that, let us begin. I start this project by sending lots of prayers to the crafting goddess as I pull apart this tissue paper. Crossing my fingers, it doesn't tear. Fortunately, it all separated without any issue and I was able to cut it like a normal pattern and use it as so. I decided to pin the pattern to the fabric as opposed to just marking it because velveteen is very slippery and I want to make sure my cuts are precise. I already suspected I wouldn't have enough fabric, so I focused mainly on cutting the bodice pieces and the belt. I cut the lining and facing out of faux silk And I cut the collar in cuffs from plain white cotton using the lower sleeve band as a guide for the cuffs. All right, so now that I got all of my fabric cut out, I do want to do the belt accessory and it requires a belt buckle. And so I got this white one and then I got this black one here. And I'm not entirely sure which one I want to do. I feel like this is more Wednesday, but I feel like this would be really nice to go in contrast to the collar and the cuffs and I like them both. Uh, luckily they are the exact same size as far as interior goes so I can just cut out the belt fabric and worry about that later which is what I'm going to do now. But I thought I'd just share that. Aren't those cute? I got these on Etsy by the way. I did have a surprising amount of fabric left but not nearly enough to make anything useful like the skirt. All right, so I did go to the store. I did not unfortunately get any fabric. They did have velveteen, which is what I believe this material is, but they only had it in other colors. They did not have any black. 
And they did have black velvet, but black velvet was super expensive. It was like $30 a yard. And uh, I can't afford that. So uh, I, instead, I've decided that I'm going to just make this Wednesday Adams dress a Wednesday Adams blouse. And I'm going to pair it with this. Yeah. So I made this along with that blouse last, not last New Year's, but the New Year's before that. And that's where all the ribnet fabric is that I'm using here. So it all kind of goes round circle. I'll just make this a blouse, pair it with this skirt, kind of like what I did last year, not last year, the year before, kind of like what I did with that project. And hopefully that will work out. And I'm, I'm sure it will be fine because this is very stretchy material. So I think foregoing the zipper closure will be fine. And I can just make it where I'll just pull it over my head. That's the plan, we'll hop to it. Armed with a giant walking foot because this fabric is slippery like the devil, I stay stitch around the collar, then make the world's tiniest pin tacks on the back before joining the shoulders together. And because I want to maintain the stretch, I serge all of the seams finished. I sew the collar around three edges, trim the corners, and pull inside out, then serge the raw edge. I repeat this in miniature for the cuffs. Next, I join the back neck facing to the front facing, then serge the sunshine out of it on a setting that may be too high for this faux silk. I finish the outer side by rolling the edge and top stitching. I sew the collar to the bodice, then sew the lining over the collar. I trim the corners and clip the curves before giving it a secure understitching. I decide to top stitch around the collar edge as well because I think it looks nice. I assemble the belly band, serge the seams, and then pin it to the bodice. I'm careful not to pull or stretch as I pin so I can ensure an even distribution of the stretch, although I do have a sneaking suspicion that I pinned the back to the front and the front to the back, but I can't prove it. And this blouse is not telling me its secrets. I join the pieces together, and then I finish with a serger, which in hindsight will not make it easier turning this blouse into a dress later, but that's a future me problem. I make the armbands by joining the seams and finishing those. Now it's time to move on to my least anticipated section, the upper armbands. I sew four long stitches across the upper sleeve so I can ruche them down to match the edges with the upper sleeve lining. This was actually surprisingly painless. Once they are ruched to my liking, I join the seams together and do the same for the lining. After that, putting the sleeves together is a snap. Wow. I pin and sew the sleeves to the bodice, being careful not to catch an extra bit of lining or ruched fabric, as it was rather bulky and slippery. Once that sweat fest was over, I did it again with the serger. I also serged the lower armband seam as well. Finally, I serged the bottom edge, roll, and top stitch. The blouse is complete, minus the buttons, which I do off screen. Now I can make the belt. I start by adding interfacing. Like me, velvet doesn't handle heat very well, so instead of iron-on interfacing, I'm using sew-in interfacing. I baste it to the belt, then join the seams with the serger. I flip inside out, top stitch along the sides, and then attach the white buckle as it accents the cuffs in the collar. Now it's ready for the reveal.
All right, there you have it, another project down, and I love this outfit. It makes me want to dance. I am not going to dance because that is not what I do, but it makes my heart and soul dance on the inside. No, I really love how it came out. I was very trepidatious about this whole project because I've because I don't really work with velvet very often and I have worked with it in the past but not to great results. Yeah, they came out and they looked okay, but I didn't feel great about them because I didn't feel like they were up to my standards of craft ability. But I did do some research and discovered that that big machine looking <laughs> device that I have for my sewing machine is a walking foot and it's designed for slippery fabrics like velvet and velveteen. So I finally got to use it. I have so many feet for my machine, but I think I've only used maybe like five different kinds of feet throughout my years of sewing and I've got way more than five. That actually reminds me, so this outfit's gonna be perfect for the funeral of my faff. So I got word back from the repair shop and unfortunately it is so old it's well it's only 16 years old but in machine years it is so old they don't make parts for it anymore and it has a busted power box that it needs new parts for. So it is officially dead and gone, unfortunately, which is really sad, unfortunately, because that was a gift from my grandmother for my 16th birthday. And I'm a little hesitant to want to get rid of it because, you know, she's been gone for a while now and I won't get any new gifts from her. So what I'm saying is I'm in the market for a new sewing machine, but they are really expensive. Fortunately, I have a secondhand Singer machine that I bought that I bought maybe a year or two ago. I also do have a ton of old machines that probably still work. And I have, a, I even have a treadle machine. So I am not at a shortage of sewing machines, but it was just no one was special. Anyway, moving on. Uh, next is the cost breakdown and summary of this. Uh, luckily, this dress did not really cost me all that much. Technically, this is all remnant fabric from my last, last New Year's project. Same with the poly silk that I lined the insides with. This was already on hand. Uh, even the pearl buttons I already had. The only thing I did pay for was the accessories, like this wig, which I got from Fantasy Wigs on Etsy, and I'll post in the description below a link to that. I also got the belt buckle off of Etsy at Kabuko. Again, I will post that in the description below. I bought this for, this was a three pack for $3.99, and then I also bought the black gem one from the same dealer for about $5. So uh, if I put those all together, that's going to be, you know, like eight, nine dollars in accessory and wig is 39. So I can do math. It is going to be 47 to 48 dollars for this project, which honestly isn't that bad considering that when I was looking at buying more uh, velvet for the skirt part, two yards is going to cost me 60 dollars in real velvet and they didn't have a velveteen option, so I'm happy to spend under $50 for this dress, especially since it's really more of a costume. There's no reason I can't wear this on the daily, but it is, Wednesday is just so iconic that I probably won't wear this unless I'm specifically dressing up as her, although I might wear this belt. This belt's really cute. I do like this wig. I'll probably wear this wig again, because in my wig era of life, I am done with real hair. <laughs> with that being said, I hope you liked this video and if you do, please consider liking and subscribing as I release a new video every other Sunday and occasionally a bonus in between. Until next time, you have a good day. Bye. Oh, and as far as the show goes, I did watch two, three episodes of it. I'm honestly really bad at watching TV, 
even streaming TV. I don't, it's just not something I do, but I did watch two, three episodes and I thought it was really cute. I liked it. Um, I'm probably not going to finish it. So anyway, so the pattern I'm going to be using today is this simplicity. Is it simplicity? I don't remember if it's simplicity. Hold on. One more time. One more time. I feel like a gothic version of that girl that Miss Trunchable spun around and tossed over the garden wall of the school. Is it recording? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> 